In this video, I'll teach you about the chemist's strategy for making peptides, or short pieces of protein, in the laboratory using chemical synthesis. We'll refer to the strategy as FMOC solid phase peptide synthesis. FMOC is a special protecting group which we'll use to protect amine functional groups from reacting when we don't want them to. Solid phase synthesis is a powerful strategy for multi-step reactions like the scheme I'll show you here. It means that we will synthesize our molecule on the surface of a solid polymer support. This allows us to isolate the product we want out of each step without having to go through tedious isolation of the product using other methods. The solid phase strategy saves us lots of time and dramatically improves our yield of product. The peptides we will create are just long chains or polymers of amino acids. We will be performing simple carbonyl substitution reactions during the synthesis. If you don't understand carbonyl substitution reactions, please learn more about them before going on with this video. There are many options to choose from when selecting the solid support for solid phase synthesis. A solid support is a plastic polymer functionalized with a linker molecule. These are often referred to as resins. I have chosen a resin commonly used in my own laboratory as an example. The polymer bead made of MBHA polymer is represented in cartoon form on my figure. The linker is rink amide and the amine functional group is protected with FMOC. The structure of FMOC is shown in pink on my figure, and the linker structure is shown in gray. Before we can add the first amino acid, the FMOC group must be removed. FMOC is stable in acidic conditions, but is easily removed by a weak base due to the acidic hydrogen, shown in bold in this FMOC structure. The products of this FMOC deprotection step are shown. We use piperidine as the base for this deprotection reaction. The result is an unprotected or free amine, which can now undergo a coupling reaction with the carbonyl of an amino acid. All side products from the deprotection reaction can simply be rinsed away from the solid support before proceeding to the next step. The next step is a carbonyl substitution reaction where a new amide bond will be formed between the free amine of the linker and the free carbonyl of an amino acid. The amino acid used in this reaction must have a protected amine. FMOC is used as the amine protecting group. The carboxylate here is not very reactive, thus the carbonyl is activated using a coupling reagent. In this figure, I am showing the coupling reagent HCTU. Coupling reagents activate the carbonyl for substitutions by converting the anionic oxygen into an acceptable leaving group. Soluble side products of the coupling reaction are rinsed away and the amino acid is left covalently attached to the resin. To add a second amino acid, these steps are repeated. First, the FMOC group is removed through deprotection with papyridine. This leaves the free amine available for the next coupling. Then, a new FMOC protected amino acid is coupled using HCTU as a coupling reagent. The free amine of the growing chain will react with the free carbonyl of the new amino acid to form a new peptide bond. Now we have a dipeptide, two amino acids linked in a chain. Repeat these steps again to add another amino acid to the end terminus. Some amino acids have side chains that can react during the coupling reactions. For these amino acids, side chain protecting groups are used to prevent undesired reactions. In the FMOC strategy, it is important that the side chain protecting groups are not sensitive to base so that these groups remain on the side chains throughout all coupling steps and do not fall off during the papyridine deprotection steps. Here, you can see that serine's alcohol has been protected as an ether using a T-butyl protecting group. The T-butyl ether is not reactive with papyridine and will remain on the peptide throughout the coupling and FMOC deprotection steps. Histidine's imidazole side chain is another example. Here, 
the histidine imidazole is protected with a trital group. After the peptide chain is complete, the final FMOC should be removed and the N-terminus can be either left as a free amine or it can be capped with an acetyl group. To cleave the peptide from the resin and remove the side chain protecting groups, acid is used. TFA is a common cleaving reagent. It is a strong acid and it will react with the linker and the side chain protecting groups, which are acid labile. It is often used as a cocktail of TFA with water and carbocation scavengers like EDT and TIS. This reaction, left for one to four hours, will yield the free peptide with unprotected side chains. The free peptide is now in solution and can be washed away from the resin. However, it will also be mixed with other side products from this reaction. Recrystallization and chromatography are usually used to purify the final peptide from the products of side chain deprotection.